first thing I should say is that I am not a for a petitioner, and I think in that respect I differ from most of the people who give these seminars, and I feel a bit of a fraud, because all I'm really going to do is essentially give you a list of books which um, you might like to go and read, if you haven't already done so, and I'm not too able to add about five thousand. Um, and this sort of arose out of a conference the British Academy of Maths held last year on mathematics and fiction, which brought together mathematicians, historians, and writers. And I organized that conference, and the first thing we said in organizing it was that we were not going to talk about either Lewis Carroll or Edward Abbott's flatland, which are the only two mathematical works of fiction that everybody knows about. So if we come to be up then, I'm sorry, I'm not going to say very much about them. In fact, Alice sneaked into the conference in a number of respects, and we'll find out later, because it seems an amazing number of characters in mathematical novels are called Alice. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's, that's what, this is not what it's about. It's also not about science fiction or chess, both of which are quite a large literature that I don't know anything about, so I'm having that for my own convenience, really but also because they, they, they deserve other um, to be discussed in their own right. Um, when I went to university to study maths, I was aware that I hadn't come across very many mathematicians in fiction. In fact, I think the first fictional mathematician I came across was uh, this one. Um, this is a book narrated by a woman who um, decided to practice the mathematics on this man, a very wealthy professor of mathematics. So the heroine decided to seduce heroine and the back to study full of dusting on his books and huge fellows. Um, and this is that, anyone know this one? This is a sort of that, um, the bell jar. Um, and heroine is not actually a very nice character. And I think that was the only official condition I was aware of at that time. There were other, there wasn't much, I, I felt there wasn't much mathematics in fiction. Um, you probably, if you're my generation, you'll have seen this one. Um, the story of Little Paul Noel. Um, but I, I'm not very good at reading the loud, so I'm not exactly read. But I'm full of mathematical jokes. You then know that's a rather clever um, detailing of mathematics in the context, um, which was circulated anonymously when I was a student, um, but possibly was originated by Richard Gibbs um, and was quite widely available on the web in slightly different forms. So these were my early encounters with mathematics. But before we follow, I thought it would be helpful to identify some categories which I'll then look at individually. And the natural categories seem to be included fiction by mathematicians. Um, I'm including Lewis Carroll, but there are novels by mathematicians. Fiction based on mathematical structures is possibly one of the most interesting fields and deserves more consideration than one of tonight. Fiction as a means of expanding mathematics. And um, one particularly prize is it here under other means of again. Fiction involving mathematicians, um, either real mathematicians or fictional ones. Fiction about doing mathematics. mathematicians as incidental characters, not the prime force of the thought of fiction and which mathematicians appear on the taxes. Um, so these are my categories and as I said, I'm not there are things I'm not including. As I say, well, I'm very happy to be interrupted at any time. Um, 
I'm not necessarily very good at those things, but I'm very happy to <laughs> read about it or whatever. Um, so. uh, No, I was put in there in, in homage to, to the main, you know, the main, the main passage in the, in the section. Um, Christian man apparitions. The thing here is I'm not aware of very much. Um, the Leo Starl, uh, Pew McCall, who was a tradition at the end of last century, wrote two novels, about which I know very little. Klaus um, Howard Hinton wrote about the third dimension, and um, I could argue that's science fiction, but I think they were rather interesting, and he was a very interesting character. <coughs> Sophia Kovetsky um, wrote a bound of novels um, and a number of plays, none of which I've come across in any English versions as that day, because I think they could be rather fascinating. Um, but she was a fascinating character. Felix Hausdorff, a um, German mathematician, a major 20th century mathematician who died tragically during the war, wrote a play in various philosophical works, not perhaps say anything, I guess, of human fiction. I'm using the term fiction pretty elastically, of course. James Clark Maxwell wrote poetry, and he's mentioned here because somebody's talking about a conference rather than because he really deserves a place there. Since I got this equation, I'm not sure I'm not deep in that. Um, there are writers who train as mathematicians, and there are probably many more, but um, these include Robert Weasel, who um, wrote some enormous classic novel, The Man Without Qualities, um, and has some mathematicians amongst his um, heroes in the other books. Um, as before, they wrote a novel, The Loser. He, he, he's a Norwegian novelist who, because he couldn't write under communism, um, wrote mathematics instead. Um, and this, I think, <coughs> really about this is published in English. Good work, like Norwegian. As I learned in Schlossenitzen, I studied that university. Um, so did J.M. Cook's. So that's two Nobel Prize winners. Kutsu actually did a PhD thesis um, on a computer analysis of um, structures in the Rock Science of Ethics. But I believe there don't seem to be very many, but well, it's not very many published novels by mathematicians. There are one from more recent ones, um, and good luck with them, I guess, would be. But perhaps a few. I mean, is it just that I don't know about them, which is very possible? Um, is it that mathematicians and fiction are exclusive activities or different kinds of creativity? Or sorry, that's not the law, I would say. Um, so, I, I may be entirely wrong, but I, I get the feeling that you'd expect more mathematicians to have written novels than that's the case. If you could land examples of people who work in the university environments. So that's fiction by mathematicians. My second category is mathematical structures. And here, um, there's a very old history. Um, here's the Arabian Nights. Um, and stuff you know, nest stories, stories which resist the conclusion that each one goes into another one and you need to have the you are. And I mean, that's quite common. Um, um, the manuscript found in Zaragoza, um, that of book of the um, early 19th century, um, has lots of, sort of nesting stories, lots of plot devices which are quite mathematical. And then we get Tristan Chandy, which is um, full of structural games and food mathematicians. Um, you know, there's the 
blank page, um, there's the diagrams of the plot lines, so um, you know, where to expect the plot to be linear, um, and just in Chandy, and the plot shows it goes all over the place with um, diversions and like that, and anything back and forward. And then we get things like video concerts and hopscotch, which is a novel which can be read in different orders. Um, you can read it from bottom to back, or you can read it. There's a, a, another chapter order that he gives you, which you can um, use instead. And um, I'm told that in the original paper, <coughs> it's actually designed so that you can read um, 300 pages or something like that and it all still works. Um, a lot of common structure preserved in English translation. And then B.S. Johnson, um, the unfortunate that I have here, it comes as a section of um, chapters which can be read in any order you like, apart from, I think, the first one, or the last one. So, so you can randomize the movement of the reader as a different experience. <coughs> um, Alistair Gray's Lanark, one, one of the um, uh, important public spatial work, um, has lots of games. It's written in four books. Um, it's not necessary to be read in the order it's represented. There's all sorts of structural games going on. There's commentary in the book itself. There's um, an index. There's an index of plagiarisms. Um, so he tells you um, where he's going to things from people and put notes. Um, there's a there's a, his own review of the book with a comment that says that um, <coughs> it's our self indulgence and I'm not saying that I'm just getting criticism but I'm validated. So on. Um, lots and lots of games there. Um, and Alistair Gray's author the author of the only book which I've ever bought because of a fantasy. Um, which is a um, good short stories, <laughs> if I had a which um, is kind of visible and it removes it. Um, but um, and then we get um, if we went to my Trouser, it's Alan Camino's novel in which um, it's a novel about somebody reading Alan Camino's new novel, if we went to my Trouser, and it's full of self-reference and 